Homestead with Jess. I wanted to go ahead and give you a garden update tour. So here in the middle we've got some zinnias growing. I've got some green beans. I'm not sure what variety this is. I can't remember. Um, and then to the left of me I have some purple romaine lettuce that is going to seed that I will be harvesting the seed off of. I've got some kurabi down here. This whole front row is kurabi and then half of this row is kurabi. My cold weather crops are not doing too well. Um, those need to be pulled. And to the right of me, I have some more cold weather crops. I've got some Brussels sprouts my kale and my cabbage everything over here is almost done i do have two armenian cucumbers here they're just starting to flower i'll have to get this up on the trellis here later i've got a little armenian cucumber starting there and then over here I had replanted some more green beans. I pulled up all the cabbage that was in this area and the green beans are coming up. Same to the left of me. That's all green beans. I pulled all the cabbage. And then in front of me is all my lettuce varieties. Everything is basically going to seed. I've got arugula in here. It's going to flower and then seed. We've got romaine lettuce here going to seed. And then I have some Swiss chard here in the middle. And this here in front of you was an experiment. I did a bunch of wildflower mix and I was really not happy with it. Only a few flowers came up. And I basically wanted this area to be nothing but flowers. That didn't work out this year, so I will not be using the wildflower mix ever again. That came from the dollar store. You could get the wildflower mix for a dollar in a box. Here I have two zucchini plants. I don't need much zucchini. I'm the only one that eats it. So I only did two plants and it's been producing really well this year. I've got my um, rattlesnake beans here that were gifted to me from Mark over at Rolling Homestead. This stuff all needs to be harvested today. They're doing great. And then in the middle, I've got um, a couple cabbages still going. And then over here, Oh, and this middle row here, and this middle row here are my chives. The weeds took over. Um, a couple of my chives died out, so I replanted. We'll see how that comes up. Here I have my yellow squash, my cooknut squash, cooknut, cooknut squash. <laughs> However you say that. But I have my yellow squash here. I only planted one of those because, again, I'm the only one that eats them. And it's been plenty for me. We'll go down this middle aisle. Now, I've already harvested radishes once this year. And I went ahead and replanted some more. I left one to go to seed. So that I can collect the seeds off of that later on. Here in the middle I have turnips, or no, yeah these are the turnips. I need to get these out of the ground and replant some more. Uh, a couple of them have also went to seed but as you've seen in a previous video I've already collected a bunch of seed from turnips so I don't need any more but these need to be pulled and taken out. 
find a good one. So here's a couple. Like I said, they're ready to come out and be harvested. We'll collect those here in a little bit. Over in front of me, I have carrots. I've got two rows of carrots here. Um, and again, the weeds took over here. They've gotten really crazy. Over to the right of me, I have some um, purple Russian kale. I've let this all go to seed and we'll need to pull this out soon as well. I've never seen so many cucumbers in my life. I'm really proud of these cucumbers, but way too many for us. But there's probably at least 30, 30 of these on the trellis right now. I mean, they're just everywhere. Look at that one there, curling up. Yep. Here's, here's another one. They're just, they're everywhere. There's some huge ones on the ground. Yeesh. And that's, I have two, three plants. Oh yeah. I have... I only have three cucumber plants in here, and this is what it has produced so far. Over here in the middle, we've got, oh, there's a volunteer uh, Swiss chard there. Um, but this row here are beets, and I believe the beets are ready to be pulled and harvested as well. They need to come out. This one's a little on the smaller side, but that's all right. But these do need to come out of the ground. You want to put that behind you with that other stuff. And then to my right here, we have all types of peppers coming on. I'm getting a little white headed. We've got your, I'm not sure what these are. Here we've got, I don't know what these are either. I'm not sure what these two pepper plants are. We've got bell peppers coming on. They're doing really good. I've got banana peppers. There's some good sized ones. Mm -hmm. We've got some more jalapenos. I plant lots of jalapenos and banana peppers for cowboy candy. We've got a banana pepper plant down here that's falling over. I'll have to get that back up. More bell peppers. I plant lots of bell peppers too because I do a lot of stewed tomatoes. More bell or er, banana peppers. What we got here? Bell peppers, jalapenos, more jalapenos, bell, banana peppers. These are all banana peppers and jalapenos. And then over here, we've got your pimento peppers, and they're doing really well. More pimento peppers there. And we've got Tabasco peppers that are coming on. They're doing well. Some more jalapenos there. And then my gigantic jungle of a loofah. It's just going crazy. I've got 
three of the of gourds in here. If you want to follow me into the jungle. It's a she cave. If you want to follow me into my cave here, <laughs> you can see we've got I'm being attacked. What? I'm being attacked. <laughs> All right, here are the loofah gourds. There's one right here. We've got another one below it over here. We've got some coming on. And if you look down below, we've got two of my artichokes. They're coming on pretty nice. This one has fallen over. I'll have to stake it up, but it's got a nice size flower there on it. And then we have all these crazy kooka melons that need to be harvested. They're just producing like crazy. There's only two plants of the kooka melons in here, and they're just coming on strong. Come over here. Behind me here, we've got my sunflowers. These are the mammoth sunflowers. They're just shooting up there. They're doing good. And then I've got onions coming on. They're getting pretty good size here. This will be the first year that I have success with onions. Um, some of them are smaller than others, and that's fine. But look at that. That's a really good size onion. Here I have a volunteer um, current tomato. It just came up on its own, and it's it's got tomatoes on it. They're just not green or they're not red yet, but they're coming on. wax beans that were gifted to me from Ginger Ninja. The wax beans have just been producing like crazy non-stop. So thank you Ginger Ninja for these. Um, they're just insane. The deer like these quite a bit. They'll nibble off the leaves but they're leaving the beans alone so that's all right with me. And we'll head over here. And we've got a row of marigolds in here, though you might not be able to see them. I've got the squash bed here, and it has just burst. It went crazy, so I need to get in here and trim all this stuff up tonight. Um, get some of these vines and leaves out of the way so that the bees can get in to pollinate the flowers, and we can see where the squashes are so we can harvest All right, I'm gonna step into this forest of squash. And you can see down here, we've got some spaghetti squash coming on. Some of them are ready, some of them are not. We've got some delicati squash in here hiding. I've got here is a start of a acorn squash or not acorn i'm sorry um what is it butternut squash and i'm not sure what this one is i can't remember if anybody has any idea that can refresh my memory what that is We've got a huge, I don't know if this is a pumpkin. It looks like a pumpkin. I don't know. I don't remember what this is as well. So any help with that would be wonderful. What is this one? It's a spaghetti squash. No, it ain't. Uh, ape, or a butternut squash. 
here is a larger size butternut squash. It's not quite ready yet. So we're going to go on the outside of this fence because this is just crazy wicked. We've got all kinds of squash growing on the vine here. And again, I am not sure what varieties these are. All my markers got washed away. So I'm not sure what I planted. I'll have to go through all my seeds again and see if I can figure it out. Here I have the purple. Here I have the purple green beans. Um, they're flowering. They've got all kinds of flowers on them, but we have not gotten any beans off of them yet. So I don't know what's going on with them. Here we have. Let me get these weeds away. One lonely. Um, okra. This is a new for new one for me. I've never grown okra before. This was gifted to me by Arkansas Woodcutter and it's a 70 year old variety. I'm excited to see what this does. Like I said, I've never grown it before. I've never had okra, so we'll see how that does. And I believe that's the only one that has survived out of the ones that we and I didn't plant that many. I planted about five of them because I didn't want to be overwhelmed with okra if I did not like it. Here I have the Glass Gem um, popcorn that was gifted to me by Kenfolk, Fan, uh, Kenfolk Farm. So thank you Kenfolk Farm. Um, this has grown really nicely. I'm happy with it so far. <coughs> All right, here we have a Christmas watermelon. This is a new variety to me. The first time I ate a Christmas watermelon was last year. And the awesome thing about the Christmas melon is it's a melon that you can harden off and save until Christmas time. So I saved those seeds. I was um, gifted that watermelon from a food pantry and I went ahead and planted them this year and they're doing great. Here is the Moon and Stars watermelon. We've got quite a few in here coming on. This is the biggest one so far. And that is the first year of me growing that. And here to the left of me is your normal typical sweet watermelon your garden watermelon these we grow every year and they're producing really good they're coming on strong all right now we're gonna switch around here over to the tomatoes and i'm gonna try to get out of this jungle <laughs> we're in the tomato row right in front of us we've got a row of basil Oh my goodness, we've got a row of basil here. And I've already took a bunch of clippings off the basil, so now it's getting bigger and producing a lot more. Here to the left of me, we've got some, I believe they're beef steak tomatoes. Um, got all types of varieties this year. I went crazy on the tomatoes. I've got the striped zebra tomatoes. These are great if you like fried green tomatoes. They fry up really good and stay firm. And then we'll go down the row. Here. We've got some more zebra striped tomatoes. I went crazy on the zebra striped tomatoes this year. I planted a bunch of them. We've got Roma tomatoes here. They're coming on. We are starting to get a red one. This is a little orange, it's turning red. We've got another row of basil here. 
And then we've got my current tomatoes down here. They're starting to turn really red. And these are one of my favorite tomatoes out of the garden. They're so good. So sweet and juicy. We've got another row of marigold here. I try to alternate between marigold and basil. And these marigolds, they produce so well and so thick this year. I can't believe it. They're still trying to bloom. And these were gifted to me by Moon Phase 5. So thank you so much, Moon Phase 5, for harvesting these from your garden and gifting them to me. We've got some more beefsteak tomatoes. We've got, I'm not sure what these are here. Um, if you want to come in a little closer and take a close look. I'm not sure if these are the Black Beauty tomatoes or if they are an heirloom variety that I planted that I can't remember. So if anybody has any idea what these are, the tips of them or the tops of the tomato are turning purple. I'm not sure. I can't remember. We've got another variety of tomatoes here. I can't remember what these are as well. I don't know. I went crazy on tomatoes this year. And then here at the bottom, we've got a spaghetti squash that is ready to be harvested. We've got a spaghetti squash that's growing into my tomatoes that needs to be moved. Here's another look at this side of the squash forest. All right, to end our tour, we've got some more basil and some more marigolds growing here and oh I did forget to mention over here for the first time I had planted poppy California poppy flowers I'm really not impressed with them I was not happy with them as soon as they bloomed they started dying they didn't last very long um, I figured that they would be a little bit bigger flower heads and they weren't so I will not be planting these again. I need to get these pulled out so they don't go to seed but I was very unhappy with the California poppies and won't be doing that again. So I am in search of flowers to put into the garden. If you have any suggestion please let me know down in the comments below. And I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and start harvesting. And Barrett is going to give you an overall view of the garden. And stay tuned to the end because we'll be doing an update on the piglets.
Alright, so I told you guys I would do an update on the piglets. We got the piglets here. Um, and I am barefoot and I am in the pig pen, but I always have a stick with me. The piglets are doing good. They're running around. They're trying to eat normal food, hard food, um, along with, don't trust her, along with um, drinking milk from their mamas. Um, my, my hogs have been trained from a young age. They're not to come towards my feet or my legs, but you never trust a pig, so never turn your back to a pig or a hog, and always have a stick with you. I don't trust them right now. I know, because they just had babies. Ooh, there's a good view of a picture of them. There's mama number one. All the piglets are running together now like a herd. We've got the boar down here, mister. Proud daddy. And now that the piglets are up running around, the fathers have taken over parenting um the parenting uh rule visitation rights visitation rights whatever you want to call it <laughs> the moms are up roaming around eating and uh the boar is watching over the piglets and also my feeder pig here that i'm showing he's also taking turns caring for the piglets he lays with them during the day mama lays with them at night here's mama loretta And we just gave him a little treat. I gave him some zucchini and cucumber. The piglets are just my favorite thing on the farm. They are adorable. Come here, mama. Right now, I really don't trust the mamas. Um, hogs. Um, personalities are a lot like humans. They all have their individual personality. Loretta here laying on the ground with babies coming. She is really docile. She, uh, oh, I just stepped in nettles. She's docile. She, um, is a very, very friendly hog. I would trust her 100%. But, when she has babies, she becomes aggressive. Now, Reba over here, the red mama, she is a very friendly pig when she's pregnant and having babies. But on a normal day, she's a very aggressive hog. So you gotta really know your hog's personalities and they've gotta know yours. They're just like children, they will they will test you to see what you let them get away with. And that's why we practice um, not allowing them near our feet or our legs when they were young. They know that they are not to come near our feet or legs. All right, so there's the update on the garden and the piglets and the hogs. Thank you for visiting Keto Homestead with Jess. And until next time, I hope you stay happy, healthy, and safe. Bye.